The Presumption of Death Act of 2013 replaced the Act of 1666 or 1666. The name of it is French for This is Life and it's called the Siestu Ic Q V Act of 1666. It was the first UK law that we have on books that we can look up easily that mentioned a presumption of death and addressed the subject matter in law. It set a seven year limit after a person has been declared dead for this supposed dead person to be proven alive in most cases but not all. When a person is missing under certain circumstances and or a certain amount of time and in the absence of any evidence that they are still alive a person may be legally declared dead even if there isn't any way to prove overtly or directly that the person's dead. Uh, direct evidence of death isn't required if there is circumstantial evidence that the person's dead or like for instance uh, there was a landslide or an earthquake or something that might have taken them out or a war. The court orders the issuing at that point after seven years traditionally but not always a death certificate. This has nothing to do with anything other than the issuance of a death certificate when you can't prove completely that a person's dead but you can prove circumstantially that they're dead. This is based on the presumption that a person has had contacts for most of their lifespan. They've been alive long enough for there to be some sort of contact with the real world. People are sometimes not able to be declared dead because you can't prove that they ever had contact with people. Recluses, uh, not brown recluses, uh, people who just are antisocial and stay away from people. Uh, also, some people will overtly leave notice usually with the local law enforcement and maybe even with the tax people that they're going to be incommunicado for a very long period of time. Now, of course, the rule is seven years. Traditionally, it's not always. In Italy, for instance, at one time, and maybe even today, you have to be dead for 20 years for someone to declare you dead. And this has got nothing to do with anything other than issuing a death certificate. This is explicitly explained in the original text, although it's in poorly done English from 1666 or 166. And the fact that they used a French set of terms or words to name it makes it much more annoying. Also, when you run Google Translate, remove all capitalization. It assumes you're using proper names because any word in any language could be a name, and if you capitalize every word, it makes it harder to type it in. No, that's not a sign that it's acknowledging all caps, Freeman on the land, conspiracy theory, grammar Nazism. It's just that it's assuming it's a proper name. It's a quirk within most translator programs, if you're not aware of it. When subjects of the crown went missing overseas due to war, uh, incident, accident, piracy, or attempting to escape the rule of law of the crown to never return and no communication could be confirmed and it could be shown traditionally that there was some communication beforehand and some people to connect with. Um, this caused a problem with people trying to inherit because it required a death certificate which normally required that you have prima facie evidence aka a corpse. You know, produce the corpse. Uh, the estates wouldn't be able to go, or, or the properties couldn't go to the families. Sometimes they would be declared abandoned because if a person simply ran off, it would be declared abandoned and maybe collected partially for taxes or be declared something that had to be managed by somebody and nobody volunteered in the family or was able to. That actually happens a lot where they want to collect on it by being sold, but they don't want to manage it. Well, the state would say, no, you have to manage it. The person's not supposed to be dead. We don't know that yet. Anyway, sometimes it would be declared abandoned, taken from the family, taken from the person who is presumed dead by the family, but not seen, presumed maybe to be an act of uh, defiance to the crown, and handed over to the church or the state. To prevent it from being turned over to the state and to prevent it from being turned over to the church, which would deny their descendants the rightful inheritance or control of the property, or at least its monetary value, a law was passed in 1666 that said 
that they are allowed to declare the person dead after seven years, denying the Fed, you know, denying the state control over the property, denying the church, and having power over it, granting themselves effectively power of attorney style status, declaring a person dead, and asking the court to issue a death certificate, a legal death certificate, rather than a medical death certificate or a morgue death certificate. You thought there were a lot of birth certificates, there are a lot of death certificate types. Says to EQV, French for this is life. So the This is Life Act of 1666 was the first rule that actually had to address the subject in a much more formal way. And again, this made sure that the property of the dead would not go to the state, and it was for issuing a death certificate when there was no proof positively that there was a body. So let's see how people fuck this up in a minute, but let's read some more here. And again, it was seven years. After the person was declared dead, the person could show up and say, I'm alive, I'm not dead, give me my property back. And then it would be a pain in the ass, but you'd have to give it back to him because you didn't have the right to take it. But sometimes the state would say, you've abandoned it effectively and we've given it to your family. Be happy we didn't give it to the church or keep it ourselves. So it seems like a decent compromise, kind of. But let's go on. An act for redress of inconveniences by want of proof of the deceased of persons beyond the seas or abstaining themselves. I'm reading poorly written English that is part of a law in England. Help me. Yes, it would, they didn't care about spelling back then, by the way, if you're not aware of it. This is a, these are legal documents. Upon whose lives their estate depends, or something thereof. It was really convoluted. That's the best I can do it. Having gone beyond sea, and that revisioners cannot find out whether they are alive or dead, if a person remaining beyond sea for seven years together and no proof of their lives, judge in action to direct a verdict as though this is life, they were dead. That's the translation if you were doing it from French. First of all, God help you if you want to find the actual original copy of it that is so poorly written that they felt a need to revise it in the 1880s so it was readable. You had to sound out words. It was understood that way. Now, the only thing I'm going to tell all of you sovereign citizens about is I'm in favor of a new law that says that every fucking old English law has to be transliterated into Gaelic. Good luck with that. So let's get on with it. I'm the detail devil. So here we go. After being amended several times by statute of law revision acts, or just trying to get the spelling correct, from 1886, 1888, 1948, the CS2EQV, poorly done French, by the way, it doesn't translate very nicely, was an uh, act of uh, 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 1666, was completely replaced, abolished, beaten to shit by... <laughs> The Presumption of Death Act of 2013 that made it readable in current language. So because it was literally replaced and it was revised so many times that it lost many components because those components were transferred over to different rules and revised in the current lingo at the time, like 1940s English, so that people could read it. So it wasn't obfuscated or occulted, making the law clearly readable, the enemy of every sovereign citizen. Because they'll just say, well, I'm going I'm to invoke this rule. It's been superseded. So have you. There aren't any outstanding effects of this rule from the 1660s for the same reason that, because that should be obvious. This was under its ruling in Chapter 11, 18, 19, and CHA 2, which probably just means Chapter 2. It is so poorly gobbled and garbled and messed up and cobbled together language that it is hard to find out what it referred to at the time, and even people at the time, very soon after, had trouble interpreting it. It was a poorly written, badly spelled rule set. So let's look at that one, So since it's subject to interpretation, because, I mean, it would, be, it would be an honest thing to say, I don't know what this means. It would be also an honest thing to make a mistake and presume it means something else. 
It is not honest to say that it's referring to birth certificates when it's explicitly talking about certifying a person's death and issuing a certificate of death. It is not acceptable to assume that it means that you have to prove a person is alive for every seven years or right after they're born. There is a law like that that I'm going to invoke here in a minute, but let's continue. <clears throat> and more importantly, this did not give over the property or the person who was still alive to the state because it explicitly forbade such a thing by letting relatives have control over the estate. And, very importantly, it had no effect on a living person because it was explicitly about the presumption that they weren't alive. It has no presumption that a person would be declared lost at sea while they're standing there or easily able to prove that they live. So someone says, we all know about this rule, so give it up, shill, and then doesn't explain what the hell they're talking about because I guarantee you this person didn't read it. This is, this is a monkey throwing turds and hoping they stick to the wall like spaghetti. There's an image you didn't need. I'm going to go cry. But anyway, quantum grammar Nazi, Russell J. Gould, David Wynn Miller, unintelligible and implausible and meritless statements. Your argument has no merit. It's the same thing as telling someone in a courtroom, you are insane or you're an idiot, more accurately. Or you're incompetent to represent yourself in court so you're not allowed to play lawyer when normal people can play lawyer and will let it happen, but you are so incompetent, we won't let you ruin your own legal status. So what I, why would anybody misinterpret it? Well, the misinterpretation goes exactly like this. And I'm not kidding. This is the simplification of it that is in plain English. The presumption is, is that up to the age of seven, you're presumed to be alive. But after the age of seven, unless it's refuted otherwise, you're declared dead. By the crown of England, which is somehow supposed to affect everyone in the United States, and yes, people will start keyboard catting that. And that the English crown or the federal government gets all your property, you're declared property, and you're also declared dead and declared lost at sea. All living persons have this happen to them. So up to the age of seven, you have to prove you're alive. Now, what is this actually based on? It's based on infant mortality in the 1880s and early 1900s, when if you didn't bring a child in before they turned age seven, or sometime around there, there was a ruling decided about that. If there is no contact with the child, you may be requested to prove the child is still alive as a dependent for tax reasons later on, but obviously for a simple thing of making sure your kid didn't die. People would have children at home, they'd be born, they'd live, and then they'd die from cholera or whatever. I always say cholera, but let's just say, you know, cooties, and die before they hit the age of seven, and people wouldn't bring it up to anybody because what's the point? They, die, they were born, lived, and died before the age of seven? That's all. They would note it in their Bible. That was considered a valid reason. Why would you write a birth and death date in a Bible if it didn't happen? Um, but there are cases where people didn't bother mentioning someone had died. and that, you know. So that's one of the reasons a lot of people are, are brought into first grade at one point at the age of seven. Seven seemed like a round number. That might cause some honest confusion, but we don't have to deal with honest confusion from sovereign citizens and grammar Nazis. We know that they're... Uh, their, their quanta is A or B. They're binary. I identify as a, as, as a non-binary. Yes, I'm binary. I'm a computer geek. But um, now that you all really do know about this rule and the fact that it's invalidated by the 1940s mostly and 2013 explicitly, it has no effect on anything. But I want it to because I want to have an argument. The argument's invalid. No one has to put up with you. No one has to care. Again, this was a rule about allowing a person to be declared dead because it was inconvenient not being able to just because you couldn't produce the body. That's all. Habeas corpus, in this case, getting in the way of normal, honest people. And it kept the crown and the church from stealing your property after you were dead. And uh, that was necessary. This went against the best wishes of the crown and was accepted as English law. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. And yeah, if you came to this video believing something else, you can go double check that I'm right below or prove me wrong or ignore all of that and just type what you're going to type anyway, most of you. Good day.